Purgatory Explained, Part 2, Chapter 42, Motives of Justice, Bared Tears. We have just spoken of the obligation of justice which is incumbent upon heirs for the execution of pious legacies. There is another duty of strict justice with regards to children. They are obliged to pray for their deceased parents reciprocally in their turn parents are bound by natural right not to forget before god those of their children who have preceded them into eternity alas there are parents who are inconsolable at the loss of a son or a dearly beloved daughter and who instead of praying for them bestow upon them nothing but a few fruitless tears let us hear what Thomas of Camp Cantemperi Cantemperi relates on this subject. The incident happened in his own family. The grandmother of Thomas had lost a son in whom she had centered her fondest hopes. Day and night she wept for him and refused all consolation. In the excess of her grief, she forgot the great duty of Christian love and did not think of praying for that soul so dear to her. The unfortunate object of this barren tenderness languished amid the flames of purgatory, receiving no alleviation of his, his sufferings. Finally, God took pity on him. One day, whilst plunged in the depths of her grief, this woman had a miraculous vision. She saw on a beautiful road a procession of young men, as graceful as angels, advancing full of joy toward a magnific magnificent city. She understood that they were souls from purgatory making their triumphal entry into heaven. She looked eagerly to see if among their ranks she could not discover her son. Alas, the child was not there, but she perceived him approaching far behind the others, sad, suffering, and fatigued, his garments drenched in, with water. Oh, dear object of my grief, she cried out to him, how is it that you remain behind that brilliant band? I should wish to see you at the head of your companions. Mother, replied the child in a plaintive voice, it is you, it is these tears which you shed over me that moisten and soil my garments and retard my enter entrance into the glory of heaven. Cease to abandon yourself to a blind and useless grief. Open your heart to more Christian sentiments. If you truly love me, relieve me in my sufferings, apply some indulgences to me, Say prayers, give alms, obtain for me the fruits of the holy sacrifice of the Mass. It is by this means that you will prove your love, for by doing so you will deliver me from prison where I languish and bring me forth to eternal life, which is far more desirable than the life terrestrial which you had given me. Then the vision disappeared. And that mother, thus admonished and brought back to true Christian sentiments, instead of giving way to her mother grief, <clears throat> applied to the practice of every good work which could give relief to the soul of her son. The great cause of this forgetfulness, this indifference, guilty neglect, and injustice toward the dead is lack of faith. For do we not see that true Christians, those animated by the spirit of faith, make the most noble sacrifices in behalf of their departed friends? Descending in spirit into those penal flames, they're, contem they're contemplating the rigors of divine justice, listening to the voice of the dead who implore their compassion. They think only how to give relief to those poor souls and consider it their most sacred duty to produce for their parents and departed friends 
all the suffrages possible, according to their means and condition. Happy are those Christians. They show their faith by their works. They are merciful, and in their turn, they shall obtain mercy. Blessed Margaret of Cortona was at first a great sinner, but after she had been sincerely converted, she blotted out her past disorders by great penances and works of mercy. Her charity towards the poor souls knew no bounds. She sacrificed everything, time, repose, satisfactions, to obtain their deliverance from Almighty God. Understanding that devotion toward the holy souls, when well directed, has for its first object our parents. Her father and mother being dead, she never ceased to offer for them her prayers, mortifications, vigils, sufferings, communions, and the masses at which she had the happiness to assist. In reward for her filial piety, God revealed to her that by all her prayers she had shortened the term of suffering which her parents would have had to endure in pur purgatory, that sh she obtained their complete deliverance and entrance into paradise. Purgatory Explained Part 2, Chapter 43 Motives of Justice Prayer for Departed Parents St. Catherine of Siena has left us a similar example. It is thus related by her biographer, Blessed Raymond of Capua. The servant of God, he writes, had an ardent zeal for the salvation of souls. I will first speak of that which she did for her father, Giacomo, of whom we have already had made mention. This excellent man had remarked the sanctity of his daughter and was filled with respectful tenderness toward her. He advised everyone in his house never to oppose her in anything, but to leave her perfect liberty in the practice of her good works. Thus the affection which united father and daughter increased day by day. Catherine constantly prayed for her father's salvation. Jacob <clears throat> Giacomo took a holy delight in the virtues of his daughter. Hoping through her merits to obtain favor before God. The life of Giacomo finally approached its end, and he was confined to bed by a dangerous illness. Seeing his condition, his daughter, as was her custom, betook herself to prayer beseeching her heavenly spouse to cure him, whom she so tenderly loved. He answered that Giacomo was at the point of death, and that to live longer would not be profitable to him. Catherine then went to her father and found him so perfectly resigned to leave this world, and without any regret, that she thanked God with all of her heart. But her filial love was not content. She returned to prayer in order to obtain from God the source of all grace, to grant her father not only pardon of all his faults, but also that at the hour of his death he might be admitted to heaven without so much as passing through the flames of purgatory. She was answered that justice could not sacrifice its rights that the soul must be perfectly pure to enter the glory of paradise. Your father, said our Lord, has led a good life in the married state and has done much that was very pleasing in my sight. Above all, his conduct toward you has been the most agreeable to me, but my justice demands that his soul should pass through fire in order to purify it from the stains which it contracted in the world. 
Oh, my loving Savior, replied Catherine. How can I bear the thought of seeing him who has nourished me, who has brought me up with such tender care, who has been so good to me during my whole life, tormented in those cruel flames? I beseech your infinite goodness not to permit his soul to leave his body until in some way or another it shall have been so perfectly cleansed that it shall have no need to pass through the fires of purgatory. Admirable condescension. God yielded to the prayer and desire of his creature. The strength of Giacomo was exhausted, but his soul could not depart as long as the conflict lasted between our Lord who alleged his justice, and Catherine, who implored his mercy. Finally, Catherine resumed, If I cannot obtain this grace without satisfying thy justice, let then that justice be exercised upon me. I am ready to suffer for my father all that thy goodness may be pleased to send me. Our Lord consented, I will accept thy proposal, he said, on account of thy love for me. I exempt thy father's soul from all expiation, but thou shalt suffer as long as thou livest the pain that was destined for him. Full of joy, Catherine cried out, Thanks for thy word, O Lord, and may thy will be done. The saint immediately returned to her father, who had just entered upon his agony. She filled him with courage and joy by giving him, on the part of God, the assurance of his eternal salvation, and she left him not until he had breathed forth his soul. At the same moment that the soul of her father was separated from the body, Catherine was seized with most violent pains, which remained until her death, without allowing her one moment of repose. She herself, adds blessed Raymond, often assured me of this, and indeed it was evident to all who saw her. But her patience was greater than her malady. All that I have related I learned from Catherine when touched in, at the sight of her sufferings, I asked her the cause thereof. I must not forget to say that at the moment her father expired, she was heard to cry out, her face beaming with joy and a smile upon her lips. May God be praised, my dear father, how I wish I were like you. During the celebration of the funeral of obsequies, when all were in tears, Catherine seemed transported with delight. She consoled her mother and everyone as though unaffected by her father's death. It was because she had seen that beloved soul come forth triumphant from the prison of the body and pass without any hindrance into eternal beatitude. This sight had inundated her with consolation because a short time previous she herself had tasted the joys of eternal light. Let us here admire the wisdom of providence. The soul of Giacomo could surely have been purified in another manner and have been immediately admit admitted into heaven like the good thief who confessed our Savior on the cross. But God willed that his purification should be effected through the sufferings of Catherine, as she herself had requested, and this not to try her, but to increase her merits and her crown. It was fitting that this holy maid, who so ardently loved the soul of her father, should receive some recompense for her filial affection. And since she had preferred the salvation of his soul to that of her own body, her bodily suffering contributed to the happiness of her soul. 
Thus she always spoke of her sweet, her dear sufferings. And she was right, for these afflictions augmented the sweetness of grace in this life and the delights of glory in the next. She confided to me that long after his death, her father Giacomo continually came to thank her for the happiness she had procured for him. He revealed many hidden things to her, warned her of the snares of the demon, and preserved her from all danger.